I'm now going to tell you a story about, well, not a story, but the story of Jack's birth. My nativity. Yeah, sort of. Well, in a way. Yeah. Except it wasn't in the manger, it was probably in like a nice boob hospital. Well, it wasn't Booper. I don't think they were Booper. It was called the... I don't know what it's called. Portland now. Hospital. Yeah, that's right. The Portland Hospital. Yes. It's a lovely hospital. And bloody expensive too. But I could just afford it because of course the school fees had kicked in then. Well, I nearly didn't afford it for poor old Barney. What? I nearly got him born in the local... Skip. Yeah. Is that mummy? Yeah. Exactly, but a home birth anyway, for Barney. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come on, Hills, yeah. spread them. Um, oh, Jack! What? Geez. No, not in that it's way. So gross talking about your mother like that. Spread them. Yes, in terms of being, you have to spread your legs and to, to deliver a child. Oh, okay. Well, if you're going to get grossed out about that, then don't tell the story of my birth because there well, is. I'm good... not going into any detail about the birth. I mean, I'm not. You know, you were born in the normal kind of way. I'm not going into that sort of disease. It's not a medical story. This, <laughs> this is just a story which is quite interesting about the day you were born, okay. right? Okay. So, your mother was taken in to the Portland Hospital to have a baby. The baby. The baby. Not a baby. No. The baby. The baby. Um, it was sometime in the evening, I seem to remember. Yes, no, it was definitely in the evening. Because... Which day? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm now, I'm, what, this is a, a trick question, right? Your was... the birthday. Yes, it's not a trick question. It's, it's, a, it's um, when is my birthday? So you, the date and the day, please. June. June, no. July. July, yes. Yeah. July the 14th? 7th. 7th, yes. And the I year? The 7th. July the 7th, 19... Well, you got that bit right. 80, something? 1980? No. How old do you think I am? I don't know. Do you think I'm 30, 38? No, 1992. <laughs> no. 1? No. 1992. You think I'm 26? No. 1996. What? 1996. You think I was born on July or June the 14th, 1996? I'm not very good with dates. Okay. You no, know I'm not. July the 7th, 1988. Right. The June. evening. Right. We've got the date clear now. So your mother is in the Portland Hospital maternity unit, right? Yes. And she's having this baby. And she's. Oh, this baby? You, know, oh, this. you having you. And she's in, she's not in the stirrups yet, but she is in the sort of birthing bed area. And I'm there with her. And then things start happening. Does her, she open her legs and there's like a shining light? No, I don't think, no, we haven't got to that bit yeah. yet. So then the gynecologist arrives, re very nice man called Peter Saunders. Top, I mean, top end. Hi, I thought gynecologist was the bottom end. No. Top end is an orthodontist. Yeah, no, I mean... The uh, bottom end is no, the gynecologist. I meant he was one of the top gynecologists okay. in London. Because you wouldn't want to get those two mixed up. And he was also... If he was a top end gynecologist. No. He was doing it in there. You wouldn't. And no. they have a dentist down there. But you probably wouldn't do that, would no. you? You wouldn't get a dentist to come in and deal with your mother when she was very pregnant. No, but I thought that that might be what you called them. A bottom end dentist. No. Do it's a gynecologist. No. So Peter Saunders arrived. When I say high end too, he was not cheap. Okay. He right. was, I mean, I'm getting the theme he was probably here. Probably the most expensive right. gynecologist so in London, but I thought nothing is too expensive for my firstborn son. Okay. So I said, money, absolutely no object, as long as we keep to a tight budget, which we'll agree beforehand. By the time it was Barnaby, the milkman was doing it. Is that, well, not quite the milkman. Oh, was doing something to your mother, but not that. Um, so. He was there at the conception, but not the delivery. The 
gynecologist arrived and he was in a dinner jacket, right, which was slightly odd. Slightly odd. And he said, I'm terribly sorry, but, you know, I, I'm not really dressed properly, but I obviously will put on a white coat. Why was he in a dinner jacket? And he's, yeah, I'm just telling you, because he was going to a gynecological dinner, the sort of annual dinner of the Royal yeah. Geographical, I mean, ge Gynecological <laughs> Society or something like that. Yeah. And he was one of the guest speakers. So he was in a dinner jacket. It wasn't then, like a geographical gynecological no, dinner it where it was no, people I, that had traveled the world no. and were talking about different vaginas around the world. No, no, it was nothing remote. Vaginas of the world. No, it wasn't that okay. at all. So he arrived, very charming. Mummy was by then in the stirrups and things were obviously getting pretty near, you know, to some action going on. Anyway, Peter Saunders got in all this stuff and then he got his gloves on and he said to me, would you like a pair of gloves? And I said, a pair of gloves? No, I've got plenty of gloves. I've only got some nice leather. He said, no, 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 to put on now. And I said, why would I want to put, well, you might like to help me with the delivery. I said, Peter, at your prices, you're expecting me to help you deliver it. You deliver the baby, that's what you do. He was seriously wanting me to... Yeah, to give you a chance to take part in the miracle yeah. of childbirth. Anyway, the miracle of childbirth is now going quite strongly. So I sneak off and r just ring a couple of people because he says that this could take, you know, half an hour or so. Uh, and then I go better. back to the delivery moment and then it really is beginning to build up. And I, I mean, I can't see anything yet, but apparently... One is expecting a head to appear fairly soon. Apparently you're not meant to watch. That's what most people say. Well, no, he was very keen for me to, be, and I said, I want most to be there. Most men say it's like my... watching your favorite pub burn down. Right, right, okay. Uh, you don't have a favorite pub, so that wouldn't work. But yeah. maybe like watching the Garrett Club burn down. Right. I said to him, I, I would like to be here. I'd like to see the birth of my son or daughter, of course. Well, I think you knew it was a boy by then. I don't think I did. When did you? When were you I sure? certainly didn't know his days of birth, but I mean, I did. I, I think of it. Anyway, so the door opens, and there, in a dinner jacket, is Nigel Havers. Your best friend. And I said, Nigel, what are you doing? And he said, Well, you rang me. I said, Well, yes, I just rang you to say I thought you'd like to know that Hillary is just about to have um, our baby. Uh, I'm going to say our oh, baby, I mean him and mine, I mean her and me. And he said, well, I thought I'd better rush round. And I said, why are you wearing a dinner jacket? And he said, well, because I'm going out for dinner tonight. It's a rather smart evening, so I thought I should put on a dinner jacket. So there's Nigel Havers standing there in a dinner jacket, looking great. There's Hillary about to produce this baby. Also in a dinner jacket? Uh, well, the child. No. Mummy. No. Oh. Mummy was in a night dress. <laughs> and then the, the birth occurred and it was all very dramatic and wonderful and out popped this sweet little bundle of joy and giggly. No, I don't, I'm sure it was giggly quite at that point, but whatever it was. It, and Jack. The child, yes. You, the you, child, me. You, you. Not the you. child. No, no, you were there. You're sweet, and then I held you for the first time, and it was so lovely. And uh, I held you in my arms, and Hillary was smiling, and I kissed her. It was a magical moment, and Nigel was over <laughs> at, on the side of the bed at the end. So, oh, it's so lovely! And and then the gynaecologist, he says, Nigel instantly loved you in chariots of fire, and Nigel said, Oh, thank you very much. He said, tell me about that, some details about that film. And then they started talking about Chariots of Fire and David Putnam, whose wife or somebody he delivered a baby for. And I thought, that's great. You know, you give him all that money. And all he did was just a little bit of business with those rubber gloves. And now he's all disinterested, off to his next event and chatting to Nigel Havers about his career. Anyway. That's just the way it was. So, but I was quite proud of my baby, so I thought we'd go off for a little walk. So off Nigel and I went, 
And in the, in the hallway outside the room, there was this very posh woman with her daughter. And as we walked past, she said, oh, it's lovely, Nigel Havers. Oh, I adore you. I loved you in The Charmer. And uh, said, oh, and look at this sweet little baby. What are you calling him? And Nigel said, oh, no, he's not actually my baby. He's, this is my agent, Michael Whitehall. Oh, great, cheers. Nice if I'd got them friend rather than your yeah, agent, yeah. as they, you know. If I'm having a baby, I always make sure my agent's around. And when we got back, Mummy was in tears because she said, you, you've gone and you've taken my baby. And I said, well, we were just sort of wandering around a bit. And then the midwife had taken the baby and, and Nigel and I had just gone off for the one celebratory. You'd had a drink? Yeah, well, there was a pub opposite the entrance, or well, there still is. So Mummy was probably crying because she thought you'd taken me off and sent me to boarding school already. Probably thought you'd got me straight on the train in a basket off to whatever boarding school would have me at that age. That's probably why she was weeping. Possibly. Do you think that they um, thought that I was Nigel's son and that you were the grandfather? Uh, I never, you were Nigel's no, father. I don't think um, anyone thought that for a moment. And can we clear up? Yeah. Obviously, Nigel arrived at my delivery. Yeah. Because you called him, yeah. which is a kind of odd thing to do. No, he wasn't the only person I called. I rang several people. I know, you, people. several people, and the one yeah. that turned up he happened to be him. And he, he and Mummy was were my very, best friend. He and Mummy were very close, weren't they? And had spent a lot of time together in the years leading up to this event. Well, Nigel had spent time with Mummy and me. I mean... Were you always, the three of you together? Was there any ever a time when mummy... His wife sometime okay. wasn't there, would have been there. Yeah. But maybe like... So foursomes. Eight months before. Um, yes. And how... He was away filming, I think, eight months before. He was doing um, that American film he did with Nick Nolte. I can't remember what it was Did called. mummy ever visit him alone? Visit him alone? Did mummy at any point ever visit or spend any time with Nigel alone in a period before my birth? No, I'm sure she didn't. Not Would not. you be willing to take a DNA test? Ridiculous. <laughs> what, you think Nigel Hayes? I'm just saying, if father. a man turns up yeah. at the delivery of a child yeah. in a dinner jacket, fingers are going to be pointed, questions are going to be asked, eyebrows right. are going to be raised. Right. Well, let them be raised. Okay. Mummy knows. She knows the truth. He's just very fond of you, and I did make him your godfather. I'm going to have to take one of your hairs. <laughs> um, Send that off to the lab. <laughs> Is there anything you want to tell me? No. <laughs> I have nothing more to say. Thanks, Daddy. Question mark. That's a lovely story. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, please do subscribe if you want to see some more videos like that um, and leave us any comments below. Um, or if you would prefer to troll Michael Whitehall directly, you can do that at Father Whitehall. Just go onto Twitter and you can just get a direct line and just troll him on there.